as soon as you invest more in the mind, the mind cannot give you what you don't know. The mind cannot give you a reaction or a response that you've never learned. So everything and how you handle situations and how you go about during your day, it's all what you have here. Hey, it's Bulela Nibalabala here. Welcome to the Small Business Podcast. We bring you weekly information, practical skills, and mentorship from industry professionals. This podcast is powered by T, an initiative that has directly impacted over 50,000 plus small businesses nationwide. This podcast is for small business owners who want to start, run, and grow their business. Follow us on all our social media platforms. Hashtag join us for T. Every Wednesday is a new podcast. Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 19 of um, the podcast, man, the small business podcast. You know, um, we bring you young, amazing, you know, entrepreneurs, South African entrepreneurs, individuals, professionals um, who are really just trendsetting and really just bulldozing their way through the entrepreneurial ecosystem and the various sectors that they're in. And I'm hosting an amazing lady today, a lady I've had the opportunity to interact with um, a lot on Instagram and (laughs) social media and WhatsApp. And I don't even think we've done a lot of actual phone calls, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was a meaningful, I think for me, it was a very meaningful engagement that sort of ensued through the lockdown. And I think just by way of introduction, um, she goes by the name of Ayanda uh, Longwane, hence um, her company name is called AMNF Dental Surgeries. In actual fact, the full name so that you get context is Mandisa Nondobego and Fair Lady. Um, <laughs> so that then forms the acronym of uh, the dental surgery that she operates. Um, she's a dental practitioner. She's she's also the founder and uh, she's also the founder and CEO of this company. And I think in her sort of humble sense, she then throws in the fact that she's also an employee of this um, company. Um, she's she's a public speaker, a motivational speaker, a mentor, and a businesswoman. Uh, and I think she's someone who's also done a lot of community activist work, social activist work, uh, within uh, driving for sanitary pads, cosmetic for both girls and boys, uh, scholarships, um, to name a few. And yeah, uh, how are you? <laughs> And I'm so excited and happy to have you. And guys, you know, watching, because this is also on YouTube, right? Okay. She's dressed to the nine. If you're listening to this on the podcast, go and watch it. Watch the podcast on YouTube. Talk about taking your profession very seriously and to the next level. Good day. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning. Good day. Ngiapila. Ngiapila. Nice. Yeah. So maybe just give us a backstory before Skulu Mangama, you know, your profession yeah. and all that stuff. I know that you're from KZN and Peter Maritzberg, but just give us a backstory. How did you land on this profession? Oh, yeah. Where do I even start? Um, so, Ayanda basically is a girl from deep rural areas um, in Maritzburg, um, in Daweni, a twing up his room in Henley. Oh. Um, growing up, I was raised by Umkul, Ginga Nigam Kul. So, um, humble beginnings, very, very humble beginnings to a point where We've never been to a dentist. Um, a dentist, Begu Yinto, Yabantu, who have money and, and. Um, until I went to varsity. So in varsity, I was doing science. I was a science fanatic until I had a toothache. So when I had a toothache, um, it got to a point where literally I had to go back home from varsity back home because I couldn't even do anything. And then Umkulu being Umkulu would suggest we put a lot of things into mm. my sockets mm. or into my um, tooth to try and make it, you know, feel better. But it wasn't working now. And then it got to a point where he was like, oh, I just go to the clinic. Woke up at about 8 o'clock, I was there. Um, 9 o'clock, we all got injected. There was like, estimation, 50 of us. So, bus drove and only at 3, um, then it was my time to take out the tooth. And by then, the local anesthetic had already worn out. Oh. Yes. So, and I was not the last patient. There were still other people to follow. And then when we got into the consulting room, I tried telling the doctor that, hey, mm. and the doctor is like, um, lady, I wouldn't have graduated and be designated where I am if I didn't know what I was doing. So you either let me do my work or you leave. So I just had a minute, I thought about it, and I'm like, 
no, I'm taking it out. Yeah. Um, so as she did the procedure, literally I could feel everything. Yeah. And my worry now was the people that were still following me. Yeah. And I didn't even get any instructions in terms of how to take care of my teeth, um, post-operative um, um, instructions um, regards to the procedure that I had done. So I was putting Grandpa, Compral, Disprin, and then I got this huge infection to a point where now I'm afraid to go back because I'm mm. thinking, what worse can they do? And it took me, I think, a month to heal from that. Um, still not going to varsity and whatnot. So in my mind, I said to myself, no, I need to know what almost killed me. And that's when I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a year in science, deregister, and then go find out what really happened. Because now, um, a lot of people, when you talk about a dentist, the first thing they say to you is, mm-mm, Labo Bandu, they are bad news. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I got into the dentistry field. And I think it was just a sign because I wouldn't trade it for anything. I love what I do. Yeah. I love what I do. And I mean, just give me an idea, right? So you, I mean, so you this young lady and you're sort of making your way through varsity. What, what, I think for the academics that and professionals that are listening to this, right? Yeah. What kept you going? Because I'm sure there were very difficult days and nights where, or rather, were there difficult days and nights where you sort of felt like, maybe let me just throw in the towel and go do something else? 90% of the time. <laughs> um, varsity on its own, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a shift. You know, the lifestyle there, um, everything is just upside down. Um, at the same time, you have to keep up with the academics because, you know, especially if you're studying through bursaries, um, NS first and whatnot, um, you always um, at the tip of your toes because any mistake you get excluded, nobody's going to find you by then. Mm. So normally they'd make a joke, for example, um, that a person who's my health science or science ever so you, you could literally see them by just walking and you, you know <laughs> it's how we dress yeah. i know we bad <laughs> <laughs> we were so bad our hair like everything was just a mess because we didn't have time you know it's cut also sabanga to just do your hair and whatnot you think mm, i would have studied and no another mm. chapter i would have added and i think also with the requirements for example, I remember with some of the courses that we do, um, they'll tell you that you can't go through with the next um, module if you don't have more than 80% or 90%. And you'd think, okay, this is the part where I don't sleep. Yeah. So there were times where we'd literally get into bed with a scrub, you know, and you wake up in the morning and you're like, Freshen because you just people. don't have the yeah. time, you know, all yeah. the time that you have, in, even in the bus, even when you're walking, you would record notes so that you listen and, you know, as you're walking, you're listening to the notes and whatnot. So, yeah, the 90% uh, of the time in varsity, you're like, today I want to quit, tomorrow you want to quit, you know, the following day. But I think what keeps me going, not that I think, what keeps me going is um, I'm very stubborn. Yeah. So, you know, when they say be stubborn with your goal, um, but flexible with the methods. Mm -hmm. I think that's how I also ended up where I am because although I was stubborn with the goal, the methods of getting to where I am, I've used different methods to be where I am. It wasn't just one method that worked, but different methods incorporated to bring me to the destination. Sure. That, and, yeah. and, and I think I love that, that, that quotation, right? It's a quotation I'm definitely going to run with consistently, <laughs> right? But I think for me, so I, I find... So I, I sort of find your story to be very, yeah. I think it's in its infancy, but very inspirational. But just give us an idea. What, what keeps you inspired, right? What keeps you out, motivated in a sense, you know? And so that you don't throw in the towel. What has kept you inspired? Um, you know, the vision, the goal. There are certain things that I want to achieve. And um, there's a certain point in my life that I want to reach. So every time, you know, I get to reminded, I, I, I mean, I get to remind myself, Uguti, okay, I am where I am right now, but what's the end goal? Where do I want to be, you know, in the next two years, three years, four years, and five years? And um, <clears throat> I, I remember, for example, if you set out a goal, let's say, for example, with regards to business, um, there's a starting point. Mm. 
And in your starting point, you did, I think most of us rush to the end point where you want to see the results, where you want to see the profits, where you want to see the end results of everything that you've been doing. Yeah. But for me, it's more about the journey, man. Enjoy the journey. So that's how I get to be inspired every day. You know, I it's like blackmail. I wake up and ask myself, how bad do I want it? Mm. So I know that you can you, you can't mm. always be motivated, but discipline as well plays a huge role in in actually getting to where you want to be. So you know, in the morning sometimes when I don't feel like okay today work da 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 da, da and then I keep reminding myself. How bad do you want it? Yeah, and yeah. at the pace that you're going at right now, how long is it going to take you to be where you want to be? So I think keeping in touch with um, the life you always dream of, it always reminds you of how you need to do better every single day because rent is due every day to me. Yeah. Give me an idea. What's your... Do you have a... Because a lot of successful pe people... And she's successful, by the way. <laughs> a lot of successful people, right, have a routine. Do yeah. you believe in a routine? Um, what sort of keeps you... Or even if it's not a routine, what works for you in keeping you grounded, right? I know for me, you know, I think at, a, at the end of a very long day or at the beginning of a very... Or of any day, you know, mm. there's a couple of things I do. Yeah. But I think for me, the stuff I do to sort of start the day and the stuff I do to sort of deal with all the clutter and the noise from throughout the day. Yeah. Do you believe in that? And if you do, what do you do? Excuse me. Um, not really a routine. Um, a routine limits me a lot. Yeah. So routine, I wouldn't use the word because soon as you do something out of the routine, you start feeling like, you know, you're not in touch, you are missing out or you are f falling short or whatnot. Um, for example, every day I have a target at work. Um, I have a personal target. I have a target with the people that I work with. So every single day without fail, when I get back to the house, I sit down and I think, how did I do? I look, I reflect. And then I ask myself, what can I do better tomorrow? It's always, you know, I create, um, you know, there's a quote I used, I think yesterday, where it says, um, today is the yesterday. I mean, today is the tomorrow I was dreaming about yesterday. Yeah. Um, with all my tomorrows, I'm already equipped. I'm already ready. You know, before I wake up and tell myself, okay, this is what I want to do today. Um, or this is what I, what I want to do tomorrow. Um, but now reality has a, has, has a different thing yeah. in store for us. So I always have that space. So it's okay. So today I'm going to the studio and this is what I will do. And if something happens in the journey of me going to the studio, what then do I do? So it's always, I always say to myself, the greatest um, investment is not the business itself, but the mind. As soon as you invest more in the mind, the mind cannot give you what you don't know. The mind cannot give you a reaction or a response that you've never learned. So everything and how you handle situations and how you go about during your day, it's all what you have here. Sure. So every day I pour. You see, this is the part in the podcast where I sort of feel like we need to throw in sound effects. Like... <laughs> <laughs> like like hand applause because you know that for me i think what you said is is it's just mind blowing right and sort of epitomizes what one needs to then do to consistently keep themselves in the game and also i think most importantly now align themselves right yeah. um but now just give me an idea so how does the business then start cuz i think you could have been a professional right that was, you know, practicing independent, not necessarily independently, but consulting for other institutions. Yeah. And that is it. What drove the practice? Because I think what I loved about some of your practices, they in the township, yeah. you know, and I think, <laughs> you know, I don't know if that links to yeah. your initiate story. Maybe just tell us a yes. bit about um, AMNF. Um there's, there's something you mentioned on, on your other podcast with um, um, Subu you said the mentality we have about township, but look at all of us, Sipuma corner, I guess. Mm. But now why would we say Sipuma corner and we call ourselves brands, but now we go out there as Sabuyi in the township to rescue the others, to give the same quality service, um, essence, yeah. you know? So, um, you know, when I look at the township, I relate a lot. Mm. I feel at home. Mm. I everything La Paya it represents me. It represents where I come from. Now again, I'm um, seeing that growing up, never been to a dentist. Da, 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 da. Now, the first thing in my mind right now is to say, 
angfunu bono munyo zopuma in the township abe in the similar situation. Yes, I can't help everybody, but langa kona konugenza i impact whilst making money. Why not? Who who are some of the people that played a pivotal part and role <laughs> um, in your career development and growth because I think one of the biggest things that sort of permeates in your journey is you know uh, you yeah. know uh, you know helping you you know you touch on you know being wanting to be there to assist and help other people yeah who are some of the people that played a pivotal role in your career development and growth uh, a lot of people um, I am a product of the community that's why in everything that I do, um, 90% is based on the community. It's based on giving back because I am who I am today and where I am. I think the way I think because of the community, because of the people who I was given a platform, basically. And I believe in um, giving back the platform to the other people as well. So um, I remember most of my inspiration came from um, people who are doing um, a career guidance at school. It came from people who came to give motivations at school. It came from books, because at that time we were not big on mentors. Um, yeah. You would yeah. just read books, you know, listen to people when they talk, you know, people when they're coming to give motivation. But you would always learn something. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, but um, there is one person that I constantly remember because till date he hasn't given up. It had gotten to a point where he was my mentor. Now, I think five years back, he said, you know what? Now I'm no longer your mentor. Now we are mentoring each other because mm. of how we've grown mm. and whatnot. Um, he goes by the name of Utine, um, a man um, from Zim. So that man was an engineer by profession. But he left everything, literally, to come and do um, 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 NGOs. So he opened NGOs, um, literally in KZN, not just in KZN, but um, I'm speaking about KZN because that's where I'm from, basically. So in KZN, he would go to every school, do motivation, um, even do um, shows and whatnot. And you find that, because mm. I can't talk, mm. but you know when I'm watching, I heal without even having to express myself. Um, listening to them talk, sharing um, 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 their testimonies. Because sometimes what you need as a person is not money, but you need to hear a me too. Mm. To see, what's, oh, I'm in the right track. Mm. Because we make it look mm. all glitter and glamorous. For example, you were talking about being... Um, sure. Having 15 years in the business, and you spoke about how when you started, it only bloomed after six years. That's a very long time. Yeah. What were you doing in the past six years before it bloomed? People don't understand that's the journey. They come to the end results first. But what were you doing then? You mentioned how um, from selling amakuinya, transporting kids, um, uh, you mentioned stationery, you know. To me, it was still, Leon, there was still the matter of being stubborn with the goal, but flexible with the method. Mm. Because um, mm. you even mentioned, I remember, it's adapting, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. I make an example. You said an internet cafe, that's where you started. Mm. I mean, internet cafes back then were banging. They were the yeah. eggs because yeah. everybody wanted to, you know, CVs. Every, we do it at the internet cafe. Now they are smartphones. So are you going to sit there and be like, hey, bayang lawyer, my business is no longer the same. You yeah. know, it was, it, no, no, no. You adapt with the times. Wake up every day. Okay. Go advance. I must advance as well. Go change. I must adapt as well. You know, it's not only about um, getting there. Getting there, maintaining. Getting there and moving higher. So. And I, and I think, sure, wow. <laughs> that, that's that's amazing. So, yeah. so tell me, Ilokuza, so here you are. You're this now professional, right? Mm -hmm. um, doctor. Or rather, how did it feel to finally get... The title doctor. Um, you know, did you did you have a Damascus moment where you sat there and you felt like yo yim velelo? To be honest, no. Um, I remember we had a, a, a sort of like an argument. So the person was asking me about success. Um, she was asking, "What is success? You are successful." Da 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 da. I said, "No, I'm not successful. Success is having a goal, working towards it, and achieving it." Mm. Um, I told you how I ended up in dentistry, yeah. but that wasn't what I wanted. Yes, I wouldn't change it. I love it. It doesn't feel like I'm going to work, but initially my plan was something else. So, you know, when I had that 
to me, um, my grandfather always said to me, I'm a healer when I talk. So to me, it sort of gelled in because um, most of the lecturers that will teach us would say they are not raising technicians, they are raising clinicians. A technician is a person that knows the, pr the procedure just to take out a tooth and whatnot. Mm. But a clinician mm. is a person who will treat you as you walk in, as you talk, as you make an I example. Like We've had, like um, I've had so many sessions with my patients where they come in with a toothache. So, but then when you take your time, speak to the patient, communicate to the patient, you find out that no, the toothache is the signs and symptoms or is the side effect of epilepsy. Now, if you're not going to go that deep, you're just going to take out a tooth, buy, take the money, and then that's it. But then if you're going to go deeper, if you're going to go further than that, you know, being a clinician rather than a technician, you're able to go beyond that. So that patient I'd see every week because now the teeth are broken, this happened, this happened, injuries, trauma. And then I sat down and I'm like, let's start from the bottom. How did we get here? Mm. Only to find out that it's epilepsy. We, um, now we tackled not the signs and symptoms or the side, of, of, um, side effects of the epilepsy. We tackled the epilepsy itself. Never seen that patient. He would only come to my surgery and be like, I just came to greet and tell you that I'm still very okay. I'll just come for the mm. cleaning and that's it. So to me, it goes far beyond that. And what's the entrepreneurial journey been like, right? Because I think, you know, for me, the you know, there were a couple of rude awakening, awakenings, right? Yeah. But I think the ones that always that is always at the tip of my tongue is that it looks glamorous from afar. We see people with big cars, wearing <laughs> blazers and jackets, midday, knocking off. But it's uh, tough. Mm, uh, mm, mm. So how, how has been, how, sorry, how has your entrepreneurial journey been? And what are some of the high moments and low moments? That's a very, very, very... I was waiting for that question. <laughs> if Bongang Buzanga brings up Jella anyway. <laughs> um, so, um, like I said, I'm um, going as honest as possible. Yeah. Because I believe if we are honest to the people out there, Sibens are baby ready mentally for mm. what they are about to embark in. Like, um, Lendo is so good to be make it look all fancy, glamorous, but big cars, now the surgery, now another surgery, now the scrubs and whatnot. But for me to be in a platform um, where now I'm able, I'm, e I'm even able to engage with such people. I had to hustle first. I had to work. Mm. I had to work. I, I remember <laughs> again your show with Usbu when you were telling him how. You invited this guy and um, he didn't come. Yeah. And you were calling him to say, hey, I invited Ubani and he didn't come. And he said to you, it's because you're not that important. Yeah. I mean, like, lea, 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 koti, etenena, um, and until you are on demand, yeah. then you make the demands. Yeah. Um, we should be honest to a point where we tell them, it's not just, business is not just about opening. Mm. Business is not just about having a title that says, I am a CEO. Yeah. You know, tell them, mm. tell them, you're going to wake up, you dress up, you petrol, you go to work and you get no clients. Tell them all the stages first so that a person who's trying to do it, who's doing it, as a one, would not that there's something wrong with them. It's part of the process. Tell them, gosars. tell them um, about putting your employees first. Tell them about it turn over at Langani. Tell them where ends don't meet to a point where you can't pay rent. Mm. Now, it's all part of the journey. That's why I said, um, to me, it's not just about being a CEO. That's why I also put employee because that's the part I enjoy the most. Mm. I am in the ground first before at the top. Hence, I understand when I'm at the top and I'm telling whoever is at the bottom what to do because now I've been there and I'm always in touch with, with, with you know, being in the bottom. Tell them that sometimes it's just going to fail. Yeah. But you have to start over. And I remember um, there was a book I read um, um before we, we met in Genda was a COVID. Mm. <laughs> so normally I'd buy books. There's a local guy who just sells books, 50 rands. So I'd buy books. So now he, he needed to give me change, but he didn't have change. So there was only one book left. And I looked at his book and I was just like, how? Oh. It had a cartoon, a mouse and a cheese. And I'm like, hey, yeah, later. And till date, I'd, I'd sell that book for millions. Mm. It really opened my eyes. That book just gave us a summary on 
how to stay in business because that's the important part. Yeah. The important part yeah. is not starting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, start, but how do you stay? Start, but how do you maintain? You know, and I remember going to um, this business seminar and I forgot my speech. So five minutes, me driving, I make a U-turn, I go back. Ngolanda Sony speech. I don't know what happened. I forgot the speech again. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Fate would have it. So when I get there, I'm thinking, oh, now I forgot the speech. Now, again, the person who was supposed to be hosting us is very late. Now, hence the MC decided, okay, um, now everybody in the in, in, in the seminar is gonna share their experience, how COVID has affected them. Now, mind you, 50% of these people that were there were launching. Mm. And the other uh, 50% were there, was there just for knowledge and whatnot. You know, everybody that spoke in that room is starting over. Hmm. Everybody in that room who was speaking was starting over. Now, it's easy when you just say to a person, start over. But what does starting over mean? Mm. It depends, especially if you're a male. You're the head of the house. There are people looking up to you. You have responsibilities. Yeah. It's not. It's easy when I just say start over. So you know, as they were speaking, my speech was. Uh, it was. It was clear why I forgot the speech. It was clear that I did have the right of um, the right information at hand, but it was to the wrong crowd at that time mm. because the timing was not right. What do I tell these people? Many a times we look at what we have to say instead of. What, what do I need to say? Yeah. So, you know, when I heard all of that, it clicked to me to say, look at these people. They are starting afresh. I mean, COVID affected. They're starting something else. Flexible with the method. Stubborn with the goal. Mm. No, it's not too good. And they were like, oh, COVID. What can I do? Is there something I can do about this? If, the, if, 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 if there's nothing I can't, if, if there's nothing I can do at this present moment, what else can I do? I'm not going to stay in 21 because I still have a goal at the end of the day. Rent is due at the end of the day. Responsibilities are corner, like it or not. So um, the for me, again, I still say it's the journey. I wake up every day and I'm ready to take on anything. I wake up every, like uh, Monday. When I woke up Monday, I got a, when, literally when I woke up, um, my, my receptionist had sent me a video. The surgery was flooded. True. And already my first patient was, I think, half eight. Um, you know, instead of being, you know, all stressed out, crazy and whatnot, I was like, what can I do? Immediately, I made means. It was sorted. Nine o'clock, I was working. So, you know, you set your mind to a point where be ready. If this is what I came here to do today and um, something else happens or in the parking or I was still going to say whatever happens, I'm coming. At the end of the day, I, it has to be done. You know, we got to learn that easy into our entity just because it's conducive enough for you, just because you feel good about it. As easy to just had to be done. Get mm. things done, basically. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, some of the work that you do, right, is social work. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe just tell us a bit about that as well. Whew. Um, Why sanitary pads? Why scholarships? You know? Very, um, it, it, that touches back home. Um, there were days where I wouldn't go to school every month because I knew, Uguti, okay, see a figure, this is Kati, and you need sanitary towels. Yeah. And growing up with, with umkulu, umkulu, you know, mm. it, it, I remember I, I had to teach him to show affection. I'd come to him and be like, and he'd be like, and then he would learn. Came to a point where you know, so seeing abanya bangani, you know, a lot of people because it's something that we know. We talk about it every day. You know, we see every month. Especially if umusha is you know, gabusha. You know that every month, a week. Two days, three days, because of sanitary towels. I mean, it gets worse for guys. At least for us girls, it's something that is understandable. It's known. Imagine a guy, um, teenage, that's where puberty sets in. And you own a roll on. How long are you going to go on high school? Older, 
ilap, mm. you know, that pressure. Mm. And you're a man, and I'm sure with the pride and whatnot, um, only after every month or after every two months. So, I mean, confidence is very important. Confidence is very, you do certain things in life, kungange confidence oba na you. So it affects a lot. Umunge na sanitary pad, now you can't go to school. Or if you know you've got something either then, you know, even your performance, how you look at yourself, because you don't feel comfortable at that um, um, time. So imagine you're going to go through that same process every month. Yeah. And with the umva now, yes, we could say, no, ikwapa, you know, there's if I'll order and it will on ayiko. How are you going to go on? Being with, interacting with other kids, sitting next to Omunyumutu, having to go there, present, having, you know. So to me, it was a thing of, it's not just that, because you don't just bring sanitary towels and you leave. We talk, we engage. Like I said, there are so many things that I picked up from my career guidance, my motivations that will heal me, any answers, you know. So to me, it was a thing of, like I said, sometimes you don't need money. You need a me too. You need a person who's going to tell you, hey, um, I've made 10 presentations. Nobody liked any. I've made 100. Only two were interested. It, it, it makes an, it, 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 it motivates the other yeah. person. Yes. Sure. So, and I, and I find that to be very inspirational. Now, here you are, this person who's got their mindset on developing and building the community, mm. and you are now facing entrepreneurship, which is very tough, right? And I, I mean, I know that your business got affected immensely by the the July 2021 <laughs> riots and looting, right? Yeah. So, but let me not paint that picture, but just tell us a bit about that. So... How did you find out? What was the immediate emotion? And what's going through your mind at that point? Um, now, before the looting, with just COVID itself, I remember I had already been sponsoring a few people, a few organizations, um, and that's out of my pockets. Now, with COVID, it started being tough. And I, it was it, now the demand grew from the people that I was helping. So I had to push more. I mean, during COVID, there were times where I'd literally leave work at nine. And I wasn't complaining. I was so satisfied because that thank you at the end of the month when I have these kids is just all I need for me to sleep peacefully. So um, when the unrest happened, um, I remember I had been in a, in a very bad space in my life where I literally, literally almost lost my life and I couldn't work for like three months. So finally, the day um, I was feeling better, ready to go back to work after three months of not working, um, the night before I was going to go to work the following day, I got a call. They're like, they're looting the surgeries. I'm like, wait, 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 I'm going to come there. Like, there's... And when I woke up the following day, I was done. Mm. Um, I remember passing through. In fact, they looted all my surgeries. Now I'm starting a fresh to a point where I've only got one going forward. So I remember passing by the other one in Pumola. I didn't even go there. Mm. Till date, I didn't even go there. I just told him it's fine. You can just shut it. Um, I, it was so heartbreaking. It was like losing, I, I don't know, a piece of me. Because like I said, I don't yeah. feel like I'm going to work. It's like I've given birth to these babies and I just take them so serious. So that one, I I didn't even go check it out. I didn't want to take anything. Literally, they destroyed everything. And um, I remember now, it's not just me I'm responsible for. Yeah, It's me, my own needs. It's the family, mm. the girls and the boys that yeah. are waiting for me to say something. Because remember now, if I'm quiet, I remember even on Insta, I normally post things. They waiting, they waiting to feed their soul and I'm just not there. So every month they waiting, you could say, I'm a peza yeza, I'm a rolona yeza, a toothpaste yeza, that small talk yeza. Because when we talk to them, it's not just how you're doing, what's affecting you, we talk. What's affecting you? What are you going to do about it? The next time we, we, we come to you, it's a matter of how far have you gone? So it's a, we keep up. So they were waiting for me to show up and I couldn't because I was at the lowest point in my life. I remember for days I wouldn't even wake up. I'd sleep. 
throughout the whole day. And then to me, it was a thing of, but now Ayanda, you're not responsible for who Ayanda Pella. There's so many people out there. Abanga gafigi gle platform when also giona, which gives you um, a mantle or wasukba Caesar. So you need to go back there. And also, like I said, the goal. And I was like, oh, is, is, is what you're doing now yeah. going to get you where you want to go? And yeah. exactly at the pace that you're going at, um, how many years is it going to take for you to get there? And I was like, Mm-mm. things have to get done. La. So I remember now putting, um, 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 writing letters for sponsorship, da 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 And... Um, it, 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 it reminded me again of this a thing you would see. Nobody owes you anything. Mm. Mm. Don't feel entitled. Now, remember I said most of my life is based on me helping out. Now, believe you me, when I wanted help, nobody was there. Yeah. It got into a point where the same yeah. um, organizations I was helping, they said to me, bring us proof of what you've been doing over the years. Mm. And I kid you not, I still have that on my Insta. I still read it because I thought, no English, because the message was clear. What is it that you can do for government without your private sector? Mm. And I'm thinking, mm. I explain my mm. problem again mm. and I send it. And um, the response was, um, one, give us um, a proof of what you've been doing. Um, for the government sector in the past years. Two, what is it that you can offer to us without your private business? <laughs> and I'm thinking, mm. but I, I have been doing, I yeah. have been sponsoring. And Angena lo muntu lo oti mangig niggas a iPad or iroll on a shoot. Bunagal. That's to me, uksizana wukonjaro. I'm not saying um bani pride or bafunuksiza benga bunagali. But to me, ako nuksiza ifunzo shoot a manja ma ped and funny lingig vez. So but sometimes just um to build a profile, I'd I'd i take pictures of the product I'm giving away, not to the people. Just the product I'm giving away, but not the person I'm giving the product to. So it had gotten to a point where literally I'd given up. Literally I'd given up. And there was a lady that contacted me. And she was like, hi, um, it's me. I like your stories. You're always inspiring. Da, 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 da. So I saw a post you made on Insta about your surgeries getting looted. And here's a person whom I think can help you. And that's how I got your contacts and they started contacting you and whatnot. So it brings me back to the point, Yoguti, I was given a platform and I must give the platform. Imagine I was just posting my motiva- my daily motivations to people that I don't know. Um, Yam Caesar to a point where when I needed help without me even knowing that person personally, Babona, and they were out there to pull me out. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to still pull other people mm. out. Because mm. I'm going to pull other people out. So, I'm going to pull other people What advice would you give to the younger you? If you had to sit in concert with this younger lady yes. in high school, varsity, or whatever, what advice would you give her to be better at or to be more confident at? Because I think for me, it would be, you know, be more confident, mm. you know? Um, definitely confidence. Confidence is, is, you must wear confidence every day. It's not about you wearing a label or wearing into that doesn't have a label. So long as it has confidence, confidence, it does, it does wonders for you. I mean, if, if you don't believe in yourself, then why would you expect us to believe in you? Yeah. Or why would you be, why would you expect us to believe in what you have if you yourself are not sure? Now, another thing I always emphasize, knowledge. There's a difference between imfundo and imfundiso. I always stress that out. There's a difference between imfundo and imfundiso. Knowledge, education. I tell them that eskole nifundiso is in. Is in. Eskole ni ever see it was just tooth. Take out... Um, do feelings, da, 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 da. We, are not, we were never taught the business side of it. Mm. Business side of it, I had to do it. I had to start over, I think, so many times in my life. Um, there was a point where I had like four or five surgeries and all gone. I had to start over. The education was there. 
book yeah. smarts i was still there but the knowledge mm. how do you open a business how do you open a business how do you how do you what's audits you know cash flow you know all those things so i learn a lot knowledge i make sure i expose myself they say um your net worth equals your social network so i make sure i'm at a place where there's network not for me to say mm, i can use this or i can use this person no yahabula yahabula because like you said this journey it, it's a journey for me like i said it's not just opening a surgery being a ceo getting money you know claim no 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 it's a journey i learn every day yeah now i think you sort of mentioned um the gentleman who are, who acted as a mentor for you right yeah <laughs> how important is having someone like that um in your life or being someone like that for someone else who might be in need Whew. it's very I, i can't stress this enough at the same time let's start here um it's very important to even find a person like that spali lab a uh, not everybody who's successful or who's there who's made it can be your mentor because yeah. you don't know their journey and how they have accumulated yeah. what they've accumulated yeah. and i think it also has to do with the spiritual connection because oh when you want to be honest they want to see you here they want to see you here but never above them mm. so you must be able to see maguguti umuntu it has come to a point where the journey has to end because there comes a time where umuntu when they're no longer growing leave if 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 when often uguya a level 4 meaning from a level 10 Spalenda one yes level one level two but if your journey ends at level four why am I dragging you to level ten because that's my vision not your vision mm. so you must mm. learn you finally was good okay this person yes we had a good thing going on for a solid five ten years as my mentor but it makes it look but toxic part ways look for something that's still you know when you were the mentor it must be a person who's able to harness the very best capabilities yeah. that you have Now, when we say mentor, we make it look fancy as if it's a person who's going to give you money, mm. a person who's going to just make things easier for you. It's definitely not like that. My mentor doesn't give me money. In fact, we've had more fights than we've <laughs> 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 Literally, we fight. We we've had more fights to a point where um going guys we would block each other for a month, for two months and then we come back and then when we come back We've learned the lesson. I don't know how we we've learned the lesson and we go stronger. I've seen him fall. I've seen him lose everything he's worked for in the past 10, 20 years and um starting afresh. He's seen me do that again. So, um mentorship is very important because you get guidance. We are habu like to indle libuzwa kwabaphambili angisho. So that's where you get wisdom basically. Um I I I I remember they came a point where i was a workaholic to a point where i'll only notice when i faint that i need to rest so there were times where i'd wake up minging a figure message at a value and i call my receptionist and she's like your mentor said i must not open and i'm give me booze i swear your mentor no more me nangi dingala as of on ads you had get frustrated i'd get you know until i learned to go to hey i cannot pour from a, from an empty cup mm. I you know you need to be uting kuphila uzophilise abanye abantu because mo ngaphilanga what are you going to pour out mo ngaphilile wena makufika omunye tu uzohabula uhabula ini kwena so to me this um that's why not that I've only had him as a mentor I've had other people mentoring me as well I, I remember I'm not going to mention the name um I I still respect her there was this lady he she owned I think more than 20 surgeries just dental um she had gps she had um physiologists she had over all over mpumalanga so she was mentoring me but then i think within a month or two it got to a point where it was like now we're competing now she saw me as a competitor she even said that and i said to her i'm not the fact that my um hunger level doesn't necessarily mean i want to be 
on top of you or mm. I want to be at the mm. top, you know. So like I said, you must be able to see when the relationship is still good and it's still harnessing the very best capabilities. And you must be able to see if a person is taming you as well. Yeah. Or if not, because one thing that makes me literally sick is being stagnant. I, I, I remember as much as I've opened, I've reopened my surgery in spread view, um, within a month or two, I started, you know, saying, no, this looks like a routine. I need something else. I need to expand. Then I started looking for another place to open. I'm, you know, I'm still under the process of mm. doing that. Because mm. for me, you know, the more I work, the more I'm able to help other people as well. So at, at any given point in time, your mentor should be a person who harnesses the very best capabilities, who's who's able to make you realize, you say, hey, I, I, I'm 29, but there's a part of me I never knew existed. Keep digging. There's always more. So, I mean, I've got a curious question, not a sure. not a not a professional smart question, but yeah. a question. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I've always dreamt of having a gold tooth with a diamond stud. <laughs> With an L shape and another L shape, <laughs> killing them on these streets. Can I get? <laughs> you know. So, so, so maybe, maybe in answering that, you could tell us. I don't know. So, what does the surgery do? Because I also don't want to put the, the the assumption, you know, of a of a dental surgery being a dental surgery because you, to me, are a doctor dentist with a difference. Yeah. I mean, from the way that you dress, you know, it's totally <laughs> different from anything you find out there. <laughs> oh, um, two stories. I remember there was a robbery at one of the surgeries um, and the guys who were there, they were demanding, I'm sure when we do these things, can you gold, can you silver, can you platinum? And they were like, we want gold, we want silver, we want platinum. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, how do I even explain this to them? You know? Um, and I remember growing up, I also wanted it. I wanted it. And then umkulu ati weifona, it's all. But just so you know, and to me, that was a very romantic um, no. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. you can't put it in and just yeah, take it out. And it it, it just has to be yeah. cemented. So to me, it was, mm, that's a very romantic no. Um, the answer to that is no. Um, when we do lesozindo, it's called cosmetic dentistry. So, for example, if we now in there's gold, there's silver, there's platinum. There's Amashepa Shugene, there's an L, there's a U, um, there's, a, there's a fool, Njongobusha, Twinkies, the stars, whatever, um, grills. So you come, we take measurements. Snamazi nyanga fani, shapes are fani, sizes are fani. So we take your measurement, it goes to the lab. And when it comes back, it specifically for you, mm, for your specific fits. fits, yeah. Now, let's be honest. I am with that gold with family in your mood. Pure gold mm. can never happen. So it's mixed with other mm. elements as well. So mm. yes, it is gold. Part of it is gold, but it's not pure, the pure, pure. Yeah. Yes, pure, pure, pure gold or silver or platinum, but it's made up of. And the other things to make sure. Ugu spelende si fagi zinuen. I bolisi, I affecti, I shinji any um contents of of easy in your lack of itself so you're not gonna get there and just start finding gold and silver and <laughs> lying around <laughs> no we don't otherwise how oh. yeah. and yeah so i mean just two more two more questions sure. before we shut out right um what what message or would you like to share with women right and i love this right i love women sharing messages to women because i feel like most of the time the content that is out there is men is comes from a male perspective telling women but yeah it's always beautiful when a woman is engaging other women because i sort of feel like women are so brilliant and amazing and i think if we have more of them taking charge and i always say this all the time taking charge of their territories, yeah, right? Yeah. Then they won't be in the back burner. And some of them sure. are in the industries that are male dominated. They will start to just break through those boundaries yeah. and mm. position themselves. Um, I'm, a, I'm always against mind conditioning. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, there's, there's a couple of arguments we've had with a few business people and they'll end up saying, 
I mean, a window. <laughs> and I just laugh because there's a certain perception I want to have about a woman. For example, I normally fight with my siblings when they have um, a bandwana. For example, a girl, and you start buying a three-year-old a doll. Not to say there's anything wrong with the doll, but soon as you buy a doll, you are conditioning yeah. that girl to say, Mina, I'm a nurturer. Mina, I must, I must, uh, seven zwami, it's the babies, it's the nappies, mm. it's the, you know, the you conditioning the mind to say, no, my lala, so ya bonsu lala ngo To me, it, 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 it's sort of like, it sets the tone at an early age to say, now, if I buy you a baby, I wouldn't even call it a doll, if I buy you a baby, giti yenze ningan, look at the boy, you buy mfana a car. The, yeah. the results yeah. that you're gonna get there. What are the results? Lomunye is more yeah. liberated. Lomunye is trying new stuff. You know, risky. Da, da, da. Lomunye, it's take care. Space, we here. Yeah. So, um, women out there, I'd say, every moment you get, shut the world and find out what you are made of. Who are you? What do you have? Not according to what other people deem important. Not according to the standard that has been set already. Remember, for a standard to be set, somebody had to do something yeah. out of the ordinary. Yeah. So now why are we only sticking to that and thinking there's nothing we can do past beyond that platform? Why do we always want to conform now to these standards that were already set to just meet them? Mm. You know, there's so much more we can do beyond the standards. You know, our definition, as soon as you say woman, it's not just, you know, the nurture, the, 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 I remember there's, there's a, a story I read on Facebook. Um, they were teasing this guy. So him and his wife, he's the one that likes cooking, um, washing dishes, you know, bathing a bantuana. The wife is the one that changes the light bulbs and <laughs> does, you know, the garden. And people are like, no, 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 no. Just fazan, if hang on, yeah, oh, you know, it was. Mm. And I'm like, they, they, they missing the point. These people are compatible. They mm. complement each other. Let him be. Let her be. And if it works for them, that's it. Stop trying to put people in a box where they have to conform to certain standards. You know, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm always in trouble. I hate rules. I don't follow rules. I hardly follow rules. Because I feel as soon as you say a rule, you limit a person yeah. so much. Because now they know I can only do this. And do Let me make an example. When I wanted to start my first surgery, I went to the bank. I wanted money. They said to me, as my profile, you've never even had a e-cut in your like Mr. Price. So we can't give you the money. And they're like, yes. I'm like, yeah, hey, hey. how does it work? Literally in springs, I went to every bank. And I said to myself, I moved. I went to every bank until Alberton. I got there. I'm not going to explain, but it happened. And then I got a call. They were like, Sisi, whatever you do, please make sure we are Tembega and you just pay the money. Because we learn us understanding. And I said to them, you know, when I sat down, I said, you know, if you're always going to be conformed, we will never be able to harness the talents that we always talk about. Like you said, Ikasi, oh, so much talent. Ikasi, you know, pila. Ikasi, there are people, this person can blow up. But you need a person to actually tap in, to help you be able to tap in into that mode, Yako, that beast mode, I usually call it. So to any woman out there, don't be a woman according to the definition set out by the world. Be who you are. Do what you feel you can do. Let it all out. Imagine being conformed just because you are expected to act a certain way, to be a certain way. Now, you know, you're no longer living, you're existing. You are just trying to conform. You're trying to fit. And remember, not everywhere you fit, you belong. You can fit. Yeah. But if it's not where you belong, grow wider. Wow. So for every woman, I think, you know, I, I there was... There was um, and another thing we always forget, we always out here telling people do it, da, 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 and we forget to um, address issues such as hierarchy of needs. I mean, I, I remember at school we were taught in varsity, we were taught if you have, for example, gum disease, I'm making an example, um, 
the oral health education I'm supposed to give you. Buy a toothbrush, a soft toothbrush, slim soft. It costs nothing less than 80 bucks. Buy a floss. Now, not in a bad way. Imagine telling Umuntu or say Alex, who has gum disease, a huge family, who has got a floss in a slim soft. That's like 200 bucks. Mm. Hierarchy of needs. Her hierarchy of needs doesn't allow her to do so. Leo 200, so sang a fit of the family for the whole week. So you must put yourself in a position where you always understand where you are at that present moment to get to where you want to go. You can't be comparing your chapter 20 to some, I mean, your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 20. Always come back and remind yourself, okay, I've met Ubulelani. Ubulelani has a Maserati, has a Ferrari. I want a Maserati and a Ferrari. And Ubulelani now can pay a bill of 50,000 just by drinks. Can I afford that at this present moment? Mm. I'm, I'm not where I want to be. So now I'm not going to look at you and feel as if, yo, I mean, I'm doing something less. Hey, hey, it's my journey. I have to get to where you were, but it's a journey. I have to understand the good time. I mean, I'm fifty rand. I'm content with where I am, but also looking forward and still striving to be where, be where I want to be in future. Wow. Parting shots? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, we, so we wrap it up. What are your what are your words of clothing? Um, the greatest thing you can be is you. There's you for a reason. There's me for a reason. I mustn't try and be you, otherwise I'm repeating into Esiveli Icon. You know, people don't understand how amazing they are. And until you understand the potential you have, the power you have, you know you're not going to go anyway. I can sit here Bulilane, and talk about how amazing of a person you are, how you are a king and all of that. If you don't believe it, if if, if it's not in you, I can do it now next year, but you're still going to be where you are. Yeah. I can. So it starts here. I can't expect you to understand the vision I have for Ayanda. Yes, you can help, but it's my vision. So when they feel entitled, they, they must be helped. Ubani must be committed. It's your vision. It's not my vision. I have to push it on my own. If Ungang Caesar, oh well. If you can't, it's still my vision. I understand where I want to be and where um and how I want to go. So it starts here. Well. Thank Old you. Days. There, there, there you, there you go, ladies Old and days. gentlemen. Um, check out her surgeries. Go there and get your tooth sorted. I know I need to spend two, three it months. It starts way. But it starts <laughs> with me. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much Thank for having you. me. That's it for today. If you like that podcast, show us some love and share it with your network. Once again, follow us on all of our social media platforms. Hashtag join us for tea. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Shout out to Joe Public for making this possible. Remember, Sisonke Rikaufela and Foster Njengom Zegezege.